Aloha y'all, Daniel Aaron here, your guide to vibrant living. And if you're into yoga, you have to, you don't have to, I highly recommend that you know this and apply this. And no kidding, this is what prompted me to become a yoga teacher training, creating the most transformational personal and spiritual development events in the yoga world ever. Because of this, so many times, as yoga teachers, what we do is lead people through a series of movements. Nothing wrong with that. It's good to breathe. It's good to move. There are many benefits. And if you also apply the bigger picture, as in why are we doing this, as in yoga with the big why, as in, hey, what it's really about is liberation, moksha, right? Freedom, samadhi, which means same as the highest it means knowing the truth of who we really are becoming free right getting ourselves to that state reminding ourselves of the truth where everything is perfect right it's like you can tell right now the sun's going in and out of the clouds here on maui and whether the cloud covers it or not the sun is still shining and our true natural essence Right? Beauty, what Jesus called the peace that passeth all understanding, it's always there, it's always available, and yet it's so easy to forget, it's so easy to get caught in the illusion in the yoga world, Sanskrit, it's called Maya, illusion. What does it mean? Well, it's, it's the sensory reality that's so seductive. Sensory, break it down, what does that mean? What we take in from our senses, as in what we can see, what we can hear, touch, smell, taste. Right? Mostly though, it's what we see. So compelling, right? It's so in our face all the time. It's easy to think that's reality. And no, that's one reality. That's a piece of reality. Truth is, that's the illusory reality. There is another one, it's called vibrational reality, right? How do you get what you want? How do you experience what you want in life? Well, you have to experience it. You have to get yourself to the state, right? The feeling of it, the vibration of it. And when you do that, all that you want, all that you imagine, all that is your birthright, again, samadhi, freedom, liberation, well, it comes to you, it becomes yours. Right, so one of my teachers put it this way, on the way to happiness, there should be some happiness. What is yoga practice, the physical asana movement stuff? It's an opportunity to practice being happy, right? Us yoga teachers, we make it uncomfortable. We give you a challenge. We say, do this, and you know, and then part of us, the human part, the survival part goes, ouch, oh no, that's hard, I don't want to do it. Right, then we get the opportunity to distract ourselves from that voice, from the survival part, it's uncomfortable, distract ourselves by, well, maybe get into the state of truth, bliss, happiness. And if not that, an intermediary step, focus on the breath, right? If you can go from, oh, this is hard, to inhale, exhale, what you did is a key skill. You moved from a, an unresourceful thought to a thought of your choosing. If you can do that, then you can also go to, this is awesome, this is the best ever, I am living the yogic life. All right, so what's the thing that you must do? You don't have to. The thing that you might want to do, and by the way, yoga student, you need to do this, whether the teacher is telling you to or not. Yoga teachers, all right, it's your job, it's your job to share this, to give the context, to remind students of the big picture of what's possible, right? We're gonna breathe and move anyway. We're gonna, you know, sweat, get more flexible, stronger, even get yoga, but, and, but, and, if you include the higher possibility, it's a lot more likely. All right, y'all, thanks so much for tuning in. If it's useful, interesting, innocuous, please like, share, subscribe, let us create a world with more vibrancy together. Aloha.